In this video, I'm going to dive into service blueprints. Service blueprints help you visually explain how a service works. A service blueprint is similar to architecture blueprints. When you're building a house, you need to have a blueprint to guide the build. When you're building a product or service, you need to have a service blueprint to help define the structure of your service. In essence, it's a visualization of the different relationships across services in a business and how everything works together. It includes the important people and touch points of the customer journey and any evidence or artifacts. The service blueprint is the next step after the customer journey map. It is especially vital to construct a service blueprint with a complex business where there are many different systems, people, and things that operate together. The customer journey is one part of the puzzle, and the service blueprint aims to build the full picture. You can use service blueprints in multiple scenarios. Service blueprints are helpful when you're trying to improve a product or service. They are also helpful when you're trying to really understand a current process or service. Often, within large corporations, no one on the team fully understands the entire process, and it's a good time to level set. When designing a new service, you can create a service blueprint for how that service will operate. This will guide the prototype design before you launch. Building your service blueprint. Step one, gather the team and define the service blueprint scope. The goal of the service blueprint is to have a full picture of the business, so it's important to have the stakeholders involved who are experts in their functional areas. Before starting, you want to be clear what the scope is. This can be a large undertaking, especially if you're dealing with a complex, large-scale business. In order to determine the scope, define the business goals. Why are you creating the service blueprint? Answering that question will help you define what you need to include in the service blueprint and what you don't need to include. Unlike most other research methods, the service blueprint is comprised of primarily internal research, not user research. Gather information, research, and artifacts through contextual inquiries, observations, stakeholder interviews, and diary studies. To kick things off, you should conduct a service design workshop. It helps to have a collaborative session with all stakeholders, and it can speed up the process because all parties are in a room and they can clarify any confusion instantly. If this isn't possible, then you can create the service blueprint individually by interviewing stakeholders and subject matter experts. If you're creating it individually, you should make sure to share it with stakeholders early and often so people can clarify any confusion. Now we start building the service blueprint. You can start by defining the physical evidence in the process. What are the systems they are using? What are the digital and physical tools they are using? How do people interact with the brand? On social media or through blog posts? Define the customer actions. These are the things the customer actually does. How do they interact with the service? Are they entering their email or interacting with a chatbot? The front stage interactions. These are the touch points between the service provider and the user. These are things the customer sees. Backstage interactions. These are things the user doesn't see. For example, the writing of a blog post or the internal approval process for posting a tweet. These are the behind the scenes supporting processes. This is how you support the service, like how the team follows up on support tickets. Map the time for each step in the service blueprint. Time is an important part of the service. A step that takes 10 minutes versus 10 hours versus 10 weeks is a big difference. That's all for service blueprints. Thanks for watching and hit the subscribe button for more videos on product and UX.